That would be me. Look who we're hanging with. Brian O'Halloran. Jason David Frank. Humberto Ramos. Please do not change channel. Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Palmer. Thank you so much for logging on and tuning in. We are in Jacksonville, Florida at iHeart Books. Guess what we're here to talk about? <laughs> this is their third year. We're here to talk about books. We're here to talk with authors. We hope you'll subscribe to the channel, come back over and over again. We have artists, filmmakers, authors, creators of all kinds, YouTube content creators, everybody here on the Hanging With Web Show. And right now, we're hanging with Noah Barfield, an author at 17. Yeah. <laughs> an overachiever. <laughs> we're here with an overachiever. Uh, he is the author of Legendland. Yes, sir. Noah, thanks for hanging with us, man. Thank you, sir. All right, thanks for coming over. Um, I'll tell you what, let's start there. Let's start with Legendland. Okay. Okay. So, Legendland is a dark fantasy novel, um, which means it takes everything you like about fantasy, all of the elves and the magic and everything, and then it throw is, throws in some good psychological horror elements as well. So some of the suspense, some of the zombies, some of the things that keep you up at night mixed in with all the Tolkien stuff. I like to think of it as sort of a once upon a time mixed with Game of Thrones. So it takes some of the fairy tale retelling, some of that stuff. Y'all hear that? That's that's some crazy stuff. Let me see that. Uh, let me see that book. <laughs> I want y'all to see this here. This, how old are you now, Noah? I'm 20 now. I was published He's at 17. 20. 20 years old. He published it. Published this at 17. It's a big book. This is this is how Noah spends his time. Yeah. He blows the curve for everyone on every paper. <laughs> uh, 500 plus pages here. Um, what inspired this book? What, what made you sit down and say, I'm gonna, I, wanna, I want to... Well, first of all, what, what inspired you? Why did you want to be a writer? So, before I traveled did the country full-time... Did anybody sit time, you down and tell you that you were going to be poor? Um, no, not, not, not exactly. Not exactly? Not exactly. Not exactly. Okay. Um, pe people, sat, people sat me down and told me, oh, why don't you get a real job? That, that was something. Um, so I was like, hey, I'll work at Spirit Halloween for a little this bit. This is a real job, <laughs> folks. 500 pages. You know, but um, I, before we traveled the country full time, I lived in the Midwest um, with tornadoes and nothing else. And. <laughs> mm. Mm. Uh uh. <laughs> tornadoes. No. 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 Not much else to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. You, you get a lot of free time on your hands. Whenever I was younger, I read Christopher Paolini's debut novel, Aragon, which is another yes. what, fantasy, dragons, all of that fun stuff. Yep. He got public. He became. He got published at 19, and he was homeschooled. I was homeschooled. I was like, I gotta beat that. So I felt very motivated to do it. Um, I started writing that book at 13. My mom had assigned me a lot of reading of like Grimm's fairy tales, uh, mm -hmm. mythology, and the like. It's like, wow, Disney has not covered a lot of these. No. Th no. 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 There, there, there are a lot of ones that Disney just did not touch on. A lot of princesses who need their own story. And okay. I wanted to be the one to give them their voice uh, in my own way. So obviously, whenever I started working on it, um, the original draft, which nobody is allowed to see, uh, is... Oh, that's going to be worth some money someday. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure oh, yeah. it will be. Um, Keep an eye on this kid. But uh, going. I'm not... But, but maybe whenever some assistant billionaire comes along, I, we, can, we can talk about releasing that draft. Releasing that draft just but, for fun, right? Yeah, just, just for fun. But right. uh, the initial draft is nowhere near what this one was. Um, I got signed on with Indigo River Publishing out of mm -hmm. Pensacola, Florida. And they respected me, and, but they knew I was homeschooled. So they're like, we're going to treat you like an author. You know, We're, yes. we're, we're going to treat you with yeah. respect, but we're also going to demand work. Uh, so but they understand my school schedule. So it took me four years to work with them on this, editing, revising. So it took you four years to work on this, yeah. publish at 17. Publish at 17, yeah. Y'all do the math on that. <laughs> Y'all figure out the math on that. He's been, now, at 20 years old, you've yes, been sir. published for two years. Yeah. You've been out doing signings yeah. and talking to readers. Yeah. What are readers saying about your book? So they, 
They they're very conflicted. After they say wow. Yeah. After, I mean, that part is that after part they is say given. after they say wow, you're so amazing. I want to be just like you. You're so handsome. That's beside the point. That uh, happens to me all the time. I, I'm sure it does. I'm it sure does. it does. We can't I can help it. I can see it. I tell, yeah. I tell, don't hate me. That's that's why don't, you're in front of the hate. camera. See, you know, yeah, that's it. I get it. That I couldn't find anybody cute to do this job <laughs> <laughs> um, for the same price as I'll do it for. Uh, so uh, you start writing at 13. Yeah. Well, oh, I started writing that. I mean, I've been writing forever. Initially, it started in kindergarten because you write and you don't have to do math. So, which is why we become writers. Yes, so exactly. So we never have I'm, to do math again. And trust me, when the royalty check comes in, there's not much math. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, unless you're writing hard sci-fi, but uh, I leave that to some of my friends. They can do the math. I'll read it and enjoy it. Absolutely, um, absolutely. But some of them have degrees and I... What's the best part of being published so far for you? The best what part, have you enjoyed the most? The best part has been reaching out to other young authors like myself, um, mm -hmm. telling them about my story. I do you know, free talks, I run workshops and all of that helping them kind of have resources that I didn't have growing up and making sure that they have a work that they're proud of and that they can confidently submit to publishers as well and get do what I did but better you know because I there are a lot of mistakes that I made along the way a lot of lessons that had to be learned on my end my publishers and everybody That's and fantastic. I want to help people do what I did but more no, that, quicker that's, that's better. fantastic man you know at 20 years old, you've got a handle on the fact that this is more, it's more than a job. Yeah. And it's more than a passion. It's a community. Exactly. And the creative community is an amazing community to be a part of. And giving back as much as you get is a huge part of that. Um, now, you run a YouTube channel where you yeah. do, yes, sir. where you speak to other authors. Mm -hmm. and in addition to that, you also give some workshops on publishing do's and don'ts, writing do's and don'ts. Yes. Okay. Uh, how long have you been doing that now? I've been running my YouTube channel for about three years now. How's um, it going? Before I was published. It's been going steady. Steady. <laughs> um, that's, that's good. Since <laughs> They know. Yeah. Well, you, guys are gonna, you guys are going to go down and check his link. You're going to click over to that YouTube channel and get some writing tips and some oh, publishing yeah. tips. I've been... Um, and uh, maybe just some like Saturday afternoon, he just wanted to talk to the camera that day. Oh, yeah. You um, get a lot of that? Oh, definitely. Um, Things pop in your head. You're a creator. You're, you're an yeah. artist, right? Yeah. You pop in your head, you got to save them to somebody. Well, I mean, I have to, I, a lot of the times whenever I look at other... 500 pages, you need a girlfriend. <laughs> oh, I have one. She's, um, she's very supportive of what I do. Uh, she's, she's very proud of you, I bet. She's my first proofreader. That's so fantastic. Her, her and my mom. Um, nice. I know my priorities. <laughs> Don't leave mom out. Oh, yeah. No, no. no mom, mom watches the show before anybody else. Exactly. You know, yeah. if, if it, uh, that's why I keep the show family yeah, yeah, friendly. Yeah, yeah. You know, some of the jokes she doesn't get because I'm in different parts of the internet than she is. Mm -hmm. But um, I keep, I always keep it family friendly because my parents are watching. So. Hey, John, why did you choose this genre? Is there something that you particularly grabs you about dark fantasy or fantasy well, elements? Well, I have always, I've always liked exploring a lot of real world problems. Um, maybe not things that are going on in the current climate, but different policies and events that have been going on throughout the world. Um, in addition to exploring humanity in general. And nothing um, is better to explore humanity than whenever you have giant talking animals in your book. Uh, it's valid. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can yeah. explore humanity in something that's you definitely can, not human. You can talk about truths that make us uncomfortable. Yeah. Because they're not uncomfortable. It's, it's okay. It's okay in this world. It's okay in this world. You can hate an auk. Yeah. You know, um, you can hate an alien. You yeah. Can, these are, these are, these are, are things that are okay to relate to or hate, even if you don't agree or exactly. disagree with them. And so, and not, it doesn't threaten your your sense of reality. Right. Um, it's when we drive that home. Mm -hmm. And the best thing that we can do as authors is tell a human truth. Right. If we can get to the human truth behind a talking rabbit. Exactly. Then we can pretty much figure out ourselves. Right. It's one of the things that Tolkien inspired me for. Mm -hmm. He talked a lot about human truths and characters, even and in morals. He was trying to impart. And uh, it's one of the reasons why I like the dark part of dark fantasy is because you get to talk about the psychological and world elements of the fantastical. And That's you, get to, man. you get to kind of disguise some of the things that you might want to talk about. This is a bright kid. Keep an eye out for this is legend land where legends go to die. <laughs> Who's super happy place. It is. It's, yeah. she's, this is cheery. Oh, yeah. Sort of in a... I really mean, your name isn't on the tombstone, so see, like, if you don't see your name, yeah, you're doing. If you're Mr. If you if your name is Mr. E, <laughs> no, 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 
No. Um, so, writers read. Mm -hmm. Favorite author. Okay. Um, I have so many. Uh, I, <laughs> I like. Oh, no, no, no. We're gonna make it narrow it down. Okay. The most inspirational favorite author. Most, all right. Can't get enough. All right. Waiting for the next book, or um, they're dead and you're not gonna get another book. Either one. I'm gonna say Edgar Allan Poe is probably one of my biggest ones, just for prose. Just for prose, inspiration, and pioneering. Hey, when you leave, she's going to give you a business card. Yeah. It's a doctor. They're very nice. Don't, 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 don't take care of you. Just saying. Uh, we don't judge. Okay. So, you know what? I need a headline. Okay. You know, this is the internet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we need, we need, some, we need, I need some... a little clickbait. Yeah. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of clickbait. So, what I did was I sent my team out to the internet okay. to find weird, wonky, personality questions, whatever. Mm -hmm. Whatever they could find. And I said, bring those back to me. Okay. And we're going to ask... Noah. And his answer is going to give me the million view headline that yeah. I need. Okay? It's going to get you on trending. I understand. As, as, as far as you know, I'm telling the truth. Yeah. I could uh -huh. be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do a little so, Photoshop. I'm gonna, I, I have no idea what these are. These are kind of double blinded. Okay. She just finds them. I don't ask questions. It's best not We're to. We're going to go up. And I will say this with a straight A penguin walks up to you carrying a sword. What does he say? Ooh, all right, all right. I'm gonna give myself like a mental time limit. There you go. Um, Start okay. the Jeopardy music. <laughs> you know. All right. Um, he says, "Where can I find my ride?" Where can I find my? Well, you gotta tell him where to find his ride. He's got a sword. Yeah. You answer the penguin's question. You're assuming it's a tame polar bear, but you don't know. You don't know. Yeah. You have no idea. Harnesses have to be bought. And, yeah. I mean, you know. it's penguin. I mean, they're special special orders. I mean, maybe, maybe you work in leather, you know? See? He's got it figured out. 20 years old. He knows this stuff. If anybody does custom leather harnesses, uh, comment below. We can... We need penguin saddles yes. for giant, tame polar bears. Please. Because we just... We invented a thing. Hey, look, we invented a thing. We're going to be billionaires. Yeah. All right. See, there we niche go. Niche market right here. That's right. Authors. All right. So, we have to wrap it up. As we do that, we're going to say thank you to our partners and friends at Some Unique Magazine, Famous Faces and the Funnies, Krypton Radio, Space Coast Comics, Off the Chain Radio with author Yvonne Mason, and Asylum Convention Entertainment Services, as well as our great friends here at iHeart Books. Remember, everybody, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next.